we can look at these feelings and ask, well, can we not put a different reality onto these feelings? Ones of joy, even. Because there isn't necessarily anything bad in the feeling itself. We've got used to understanding it as an uncomfortable feeling and presenting it in terms of our own personal melodrama. So it's interesting when Vasistha is telling this story, he's not expressing any feelings. He's witnessed cosmic dissolution. He's witnessed 12 solar deities destroying the abode of the Creator. He's witnessed lives being snuffed out. And now he's witnessing this dance of these terrifying figures, first of Rudra and then Kalaratri. In a way, by talking about it, you can avoid getting caught up in the story of it. So there are times it seems like this is for Sister's own spiritual practice. We're hearing about it. It's for Sister's own self-inquiry. It's his own enlightenment practice. So let's get the significance of the dance now. Consciousness is never without some movement within itself. I'm just going to jump ahead to the last sentence of the next chapter, which says, the notion of motion in consciousness is ignorance. There seems to be a direct contradiction there, but we'll come to that later. Normally consciousness is described as still, but here it's described as never without some movement within itself. And this is the nature of consciousness, of awareness. Recently I asked you what it's like to be you. And in trying to find out what it's like to be you, you made all sorts of considerations. Are you a mood? Are you an idea? Are you a soul? Are you awareness? All these things. Your awareness is moving around. Your consciousness is moving around. Bringing all these different possibilities into its purview. Without this movement, it might become unreal. Unreal is between apostrophes here, indicating that consciousness can never become unreal. I think what it means here is perhaps unnatural. For example, if you're a yogi trying to still the attention, keep it still, well, you can never do that. You always have to keep bringing the attention back and perhaps it can be still, perhaps if you're a great yogi, it can be still for extended periods. But even the process of blocking other things out is an act of consciousness, it's an act of movement. I think all it's saying is there's something a bit artificial about this, especially if you're, if you're a spiritual practitioner. It's quite good to practice this sometimes just to experience the nature of consciousness. But the stated goal of a lot of yogic or meditation practice to do with stilling the mind is a bit artificial. Thus consciousness appeared to be Rudra on account of this movement within itself. There's always something going on in consciousness. There's always something. There is never nothing. There cannot be nothing. Movement is the very nature of consciousness and therefore inseparable from it. That movement of consciousness is expressed by things arising in consciousness. Things which we might call external or things which we might call internal. This movement of consciousness within itself is what was experienced as the dance of Lord Rudra. 
that movement was but pure movement. It was experienced by me as the dance of the Lord on account of my own psychological conditioning. Thus, the dance of the Lord was the movement within pure consciousness. And that movement gives rise to the dance of Kali. Rama asked, when all that is unreal is dissolved during the cosmic dissolution, how does consciousness become aware and of what? So basically Rama is asking me if everything has been destroyed, how can there be something to be aware of? My answer to that was, there can never be nothing, even during the cosmic dissolution. Let's see what Vasishta says. Vasishta continued, of course consciousness does not become aware of another. What is said to be the object of observation here is only a reference to the very nature of that consciousness. Just as in a dream the cities etc. are all within the consciousness of the dreamer, consciousness becomes aware of its own movement within itself right from the moment this movement arises. Thus arise in it notions of a moment, an age, a world cycle etc. as also notions of I and you etc. Thus there is neither a duality nor a unity nor a void, neither consciousness as the subject, nor unconsciousness. There is pure silence, or not even that. The infinite consciousness alone exists. And the analogy of the dreamer is useful here. Within a dream we have all these experiences, and we could call them all consciousness, couldn't we? It's consciousness playing with itself within the dream. It's arguable that in a dream there's even greater variety than we have in our waking state. But what's going on in a dream? It's quite easy to see that it's consciousness going on in a dream. And it's the same consciousness that is going on in our waking state.